Okay, so in this video, we are going to discuss what excess demand and excess supply mean. In all the other videos of this chapter, we have assumed that things other than price are all constant. Well, in this video, that no longer exists. That assumption is no longer valid. And first, we are going to take a look at how, um, by removing this assumption, how the changes in the demand move the demand curve completely up and down and how uh, the changes in supply move the uh, supply curve up and down completely. So uh, first we are going to take a look at uh, the changes in the demand curve, then the changes in the supply curve, and then we are going to take a look at all the factors that cause these changes. So let's talk about this figure first. In this diagram, in the, on the x-axis we have the quantity and on the y-axis we have the price. Now, the original demand and supply curve, demand which is downward sloping here, named as D0, and the supply curve which is upward sloping and is named as S0. First, let's talk about when uh, the demand curve actually shifts downwards. This happens when for every price, there is a lesser amount of demand than there was before. When the, when the demand curve moves to the left and comes down, there is, there is this gap right here at the same original price of P0. Now in this gap, there is, as you obviously see, there is excess supply where the point on S0 here is greater than that on the new demand line for the same original price. In a situation like this, when there is excess supply, the firms realize that the price may be a little too high for the consumers to want and be able to purchase this good and hence the price comes down. The price falls until eventually the demand increases enough to coincide the original supply curve which remains unchanged and hence the quantity demanded actually reduces. The quantity demanded reduces because um, of the fall in the demand curve and because of said changes to get to the equilibrium point where the market clears, the price changes from P, uh, price falls from P0 to P1. Now let's talk about what happens when the demand curve increases. For every price, there is a higher demand than it was before. This moves the uh, demand curve rightwards here. So, at the same price as there was before, there is excess demand as you can see here. And um, when there is excess demand, there are consumers that are left unsatisfied and hence are willing to pay a higher price for said product. Now, the price moves from P0 to P2 up until the new demand curve intersects with the original supply curve which is unchanged and you get a new quantity Q2 and hence from the original point Q the quantity demanded increases and the price increases. As you may have noticed the changes in whatever changes are there on, uh, on the demand curve the quantity and the price move in the same direction. Now let's talk about the second diagram where we change the supply curve. Again, on the x-axis we have quantity supplied and on the y-axis we have price. Here the original um, point of equilibrium is where D0 and S0 intersect with price as P0 and quantity as Q0. Now let's take a look at when the supply decreases, which means for every price there is less supply than there was before. In this situation, as you can notice, there is an increase, uh, there is an excess demand. And when there is excess demand, again, the, uh, there are some consumers which are left unsatisfied and hence um, they may be willing uh, to purchase uh, the said product at a higher price and hence the price increases from P0 to P1 up until the new supply curve intersects with the original demand curve 
and you get a quantity Q1. Here, the price increases from the equilibrium, but the quantity decreases. Now, let's talk about when the supply curve increases and moves towards the right. For every price, uh, the producer now produces more of a product than he did before. Here, when uh, the supply moves towards the right, here, here there is excess supply, which means now there is more supply uh, than there is demand. And in cases like this, the uh, producers feel that they are charging a higher price and by lowering the price, they could increase the amount of consumers who would purchase their product. Hence, the price starts to fall from P0 to P2. The price falls up until the new supply curve intersects with the original demand curve and you get the quantity Q2. Again, notice here, the quantity increases from the uh, equilibrium quantity, but the price decreases, which means that whatever changes occur in the supply curve, the, the, the changes in the price and the changes in the quantity move in the opposite direction. Now let's talk about some of the factors that cause these changes in the demand and supply curve. First, we are going to look at income. Let us assume that uh, in a situation, the income increases. Now, as we have seen in the earlier videos, there are two types of goods. Inferior, inferior good and normal goods. Inferior goods are goods whose demand moves in the opposite direction uh, to, the, uh, to the income. Whereas normal, the demand for uh, a good and the income moves in the same direction. Now an increase in income would decrease the demand of an inferior good. Which means the demand moves from D0 to D1 which is on the left and the supply remains unchanged. In a normal good, as the income increases, the demand increases, which means it moves from D0 to D2, which is on the right. And again, the supply remains unchanged. Now let's talk about increase in number of consumers. If the, if the number of consumers increase, which means the demand of any product would increase, which means the demand curve would move from D0 to D1. Increase in demand to the right. And again, the supply remains unchanged. Now let's talk about increase in price of factor of production. Increase in price of factor of production increases the marginal cost. An increase in marginal cost essentially would make it costlier for a firm to produce as many goods as it did before and hence the supply of this product comes down which means it moves from S0 to S1 which is a fall in the supply towards the left and the demand remains unchanged. Finally, let's talk about an increase in number of firms. When the number of firms increase, uh, there are more firms that would supply said product and hence the supply increases from S0 to S2, which means there is an increase in supply to the right, but the demand remains unchanged. So in this video, we have discussed how the demand curve moves and what are its implications, how supply curve moves, what are its implications and the factors that affect this change in the demand and supply curve. That's all for this video. Thank you.